Let's talk about output and cutting in Blingit. We have a three color, three size of rhinestone design in front of us. It is a red S10, black S12, and then smaller orange S6 rhinestone setting. So we have three different sizes now. Our plotter can plot all of these. But before we go to cut, we do need to have a couple things that we may ensure that we do. First of all, the plotter will cut everything that you see. This plotter can actually, with this software, cut stencils, it can cut signed material, it can cut anything that this so you put into the software, but it cuts in wireframe. So right here, if we zoom in, you can actually see all these lines right here would actually be cut if we were actually in our plotter program and did not do this next step. step. So this next step is very important. We're gonna to go to our cut settings and we're gonna go only output rhinestones. And that's only going to output the round rhinestones in the design. So if we zoom in again, we can see these rhinestones, it's only gonna cut the outside shape of the rhinestone. It's not gonna cut all the rest of the lines or that line right there. If we don't do that, it will try to cut all these lines and make a mess of our stencil material. Next, let's take a look at our page size. If you notice right now, our page size is set, is set to 15 by 15. Well, our stencil material is 15 inches wide. So whatever you're cutting, I would recommend setting your page size to 15 by 15. And once again, we do that by going to layout and then blank size, and then setting that to 15 by however long you want to cut your rhinestone stencil. Now let's review our output options. When I'm talking about output, I'm not only talking about cutting, but I'm talking about publishing. So we do have a couple export options here. We have export, we can export this file as an Illustrator file, as a PDF, as a uh, EPS file. Now take a look at this file and tell me what you see. What I see is a ton of information. I see lines, I see rhinestones, I see smaller shapes of rhinestones, I see multiple sizes of rhinestones. So what that means is that this is going to be a pretty complex file. And whatever we output to, it's going to take a little bit of time to raster. And you do want to make sure that you don't have a lot of programs open on your computer. And also, you have a pretty beefy software computer, meaning that you have a lot of RAM in your system. And then also, you have a graphics, dedicated graphics card optimally. You don't have to have a dedicated graphics card, but if you only have a gigabyte of RAM in your system, this might take a long time to run, especially in these output functions. So, for instance, this design, if we outputted this design as an EPS, we could then open up that up in Illustrator, Photoshop, or CorelDRAW. Now, right now, what I'm doing is actually exporting that as an EPS, and in Photoshop, I put it over a t-shirt template. So, you can see right here, this is one way you can mock up your designs in, on the actual shirt themselves. That would be the way a shirt would might look. I mean, obviously, it's not realistic because you don't see the bling in the rhinestones, but it's a similar template design to what the shirt may look in Photoshop. This is probably the best way to do it if you're going to layer it on top of other clothing. If you just want to send your client a sample of the rhinestone design, that's fairly easy to do as well. All we need to do there is go to export. We can publish it to a PDF. Once again, if this is a complicated rhinestone design, this is going to take quite a long time. Or we could go simply to web and send image by email. And that way we could either show our fills or turn our fills off. So let's say you wanted to show fill to show the specific color of the background of the rhinestone image. It gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. But if we're going to want to mock it up on a t-shirt, I recommend doing that in Photoshop or Illustrator and actually exporting that as an Illustrator file or an e Now let's go to cut. Cutting with blingin is very, very simple. First, before we cut, we do need to make sure that our entire design is selected. If we have nothing selected, there will be nothing to cut. Then we'll go to cut, and what all our cut tool is is just this little, these little scissors right here. So we'll do that, and that's going to open up our cut preview. Now we're in the cut or the cut preview mode. Now we're in tile mode. If we go to cut preview mode, it changes things up a little bit and shows just exactly what we're going to be cutting. Now we're in the preview screen. Now keep in mind that our media size is 15 inches. So from this point right here up to this point should not be higher than 15 inches. Right now this design obviously was in a 15 by 15 template to begin with, so we know it's not larger than 15 inches. And when it pulls it into the preview mode, it automatically centers it in the bottom left-hand corner. And let me explain how that correlates to your plotter. So if you go to cut preview, that's going to show what it's actually going to cut. Now, your plotter, if you look out over your plotter, so let's say you virtually stood behind your plotter, you're looking over your plotter, this would be the bottom left of your plotter. This would be the width of your plotter, and this would be your media size length, so to and from. So we have your width, we have your bottom left-hand corner, and then we have your length. 
Now, if we were looking directly at the plotter, this would be the right-hand side of your plotter. This would still be the length of your plotter, or the, excuse me, the width of your plotter, and this would be the length of your media. So we do have some options here. Typically, you're only going to be cutting one stencil, but if you wanted to cut multiple stencils, we could go to repeats and we could choose two, three, four, five, six, however many repeats we want. This would be important if you were, per se, let's say, cutting something that was a uh, high quantity. So instead of just making one stencil, you wanted to make 10 stencils. So you had, could have multiple people doing it or you could use a much larger stencil bin and do it that way. For this particular design, we only want to do one, so obviously we're only going to cut one. Now, once this is all laid out, we're going to simply go to cut and we can we can either do this in cut preview or in this menu right here but we simply go to cut and that will rip it to our plotter and start cutting once again orienting itself to the bottom left hand side looking at the plotter the bottom right hand side or the right hand side of your media starting from right to left as i'm moving my mouse across it as you see it a few final things to overview at the cut screen let's say you already used the left hand side of your media and you wanted to use the other side of it well, we do have the ability to move this design and move it up against the media. Now, keep in mind, we only have 15 inches of room here, so we don't have a lot of room to move with. But let's say we're using a much smaller design, like just this b-ball. So let's say I close this out, and I was just outputting the b-ball. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight just the b-ball, and then I'm going to cut this. Highlight this, and then cut. Now I have just the b-ball cut. Well, I have 15 inches to work with right here. So I can actually orient myself. You can actually measure how much you've already cut out. So let's say we cut out a eight inch design and we have nine more inches, excuse me, seven more inches to work with. So we can actually orient this seven inches up by typing seven in the Y axis and enter. And that would orient it seven inches up. And if we place that same media in the plotter that we've already weeded out, it would start where the media is left to continue to weed. This is important to know because it can help you use your media efficiently. A lot of times your designs don't take up your entire media, but you can still use that area of the stencil even though your design didn't take it up previously by doing making these modifications both forward and backwards. This is the Y axis, this is the X axis. So if you wanted to move it back a little bit, not start it at the very front of the media, we could do that as well. And once again, this can be done by simply measuring your media. This concludes our cutting tutorial on how to cut and output with your Blingit software.